Today's video is all about how to protect your house from a house fire and why you have to put in an electrical box if you replace an old light fixture that doesn't already have one. We'll also light something on fire and do a little bit of fire resistant testing and I have a step-by-step -step guide how to test the responsiveness of your local fire department on Stylish Sky DIY. If you replace an existing light fixture, an outlet or even just a switch, you're by law required to update to the national as well as local electrical codes to ensure that everything is installed safely. Which in this case means adding an electrical junction box. I'll show you later how easy that is to do. Let's say you sell your house and a light fixture that you replaced but did not update the code was the root cause for a house fire, you could be deemed liable and responsible. Every year there is an average of 350,000 home-based fires, killing an average of 2,600 people each year. 36.3% of these fires are caused by electrical problems and if we dig deeper into those figures, 67% of those electrical fires are related directly to issues with electrical wiring. What you see here is me simulating arcing inside a wire nut. This can happen because the wrong wire nut was used, but it can also happen from years of thermal expansion and contraction. I have actually even seen this once myself in the winter in the attic of an older home in the Midwest where temperature changes between the seasons are much more extreme. So let's do an actual fire test. Off to Lowe's to buy an old work electrical box. Apparently there's an old work electrical parts shortage. You can buy new work parts, but if you look for old work, everything is empty. I've been already to three different stores and I cannot find an old work electrical box. This is the only one I could find. So whoever needed this one badly and sees me destroy it... Sorry! If you look at any website that sells this kind of electrical boxes, you can see that it has a 2 hour fire rating. I'm not exactly sure what the definition of that is, but let's put it to the test. I'm making a little fire and you can see the less oxygen gets into the box, the harder it is to start or maintain a fire. As a matter of fact, when I put the lid on it, the fire actually went out. I also covered this topic in my drywall inspection video, there is a link to it at the end. But that is why it is also important to use fire resistant foam to close all openings in the box to reduce and eliminate oxygen flow. Now let's use something a little bit more extreme. This propane torch has a flame of about 3600 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see how long this box can hold up. I just have to make sure that I don't create too much smoke out here, otherwise I get in trouble again. So while we wait, let me tell you a quick story that happened to me. When I first moved into this house, I think it was like the second day, I modified my fireplace mantle and I had to cut through a thick wooden beam. Because cutting the wood caused so much smoke, I opened the French doors to the outside. Then I heard sirens and it sounded very close. So I peeked out the front door, I saw this fireman running across the front lawn in full gear with gas masks on. It looked like in the damn ET movie out there. What's happening? One of the firefighters said, Are you brewing beer in there, boy? They showed up with three vehicles, two of them fire trucks. And of course the whole neighborhood was out there. It is a great way to test the responsiveness of your fire department and to get to know all your neighbors all at once. 
They were super fast, by the way. I could not even finish cutting through that wood beam and they were already here. Seriously though, don't try this at home. Even now when I go for a walk around here, I hear them whisper, that's the idiot that almost burned down the neighborhood. So let's look at the damage here after the propane torch. You can see the box actually held up pretty well. So it's definitely a preventive measure for house fires. Now let's see how to install an electrical box like this. Once the box is inserted into the wall cutout and the screws are tightened, this little plastic tabs pop out and it tightens it against the back of the drywall. You want to measure where to make your cutout. Mark the drywall with your old work electrical box like this and then use a drywall saw to cut out the opening. Hopefully you won't hit a stud because then it gets a little more complicated. The ground rule is if you do hit a stud, especially in your ceiling, never cut through it. And then you want to check if the electrical box fits. You might have to mark it again and cut out some more until it fits perfectly. Once it fits perfect, don't forget to pull the cable through the opening in the back and tighten the screws. As you see, not complicated, almost anybody can do it. Oh, and before I forget, the official recommendation from the fire department was to replace the saw blade. As always, thank you for watching. If you like to see more of this kind of videos, please subscribe and push the like button. See you next time.